Hi, Helen. Good morning. Hi, Heather. Good morning, B. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Ann. Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Christine. Oh, Billy, I love that name for a girl. Billy. Oh, that was like days of our lives. Good morning, Joyelle. Uh, good morning, Carmen. So today, um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Talk. Today, my nugget turns eight. Can you believe Charlie is eight years old today? I can't believe it. So I was supposed to go do my radio show, and Charlie does not want me to leave. So part of being a mom is sacrificing some of what you want to do uh, for what your children want you to do. So it's her birthday. I'm going to stay, um, and I'm going to do the radio show next week with Positive K. For those of you that listen to hip-hop, Positive K was the guy who sings um, what your man got to do with me? I got a man. I'm not trying to hear that, see? I'm not one of those girls that goes messing around. I'm not a dog, baby, so don't play me like a clown. I could do the whole song for you, but anyway. Um, so I'm excited about that. I got some new pajamas. I'm super excited about that. I never get new pajamas, and I sleep in pajamas every single night. And I got some new ones that we are testing out for excited because I love pyjamas. Pyjamas. Um, so, okay. So a couple of things on Thanksgiving. I want, good morning, Phil Simpson. So on Thanksgiving, I was sitting with, um, hi Leslie, uh, father Bob and father Gary. So father Gary is from a college. He's like a college priest and he's good friends with Bobby. They've been friends for like 30 years. Anyway, so I'm sitting between two priests. There's, if that's not the beginning of a joke, folks, I don't know what is. But anyway, so I'm sitting between them and it's the end of the day. We're all full and like everybody's having a cocktail and I'm drinking coffee because I'm trying to stay awake. And um, so I casually like turn to them, you know, sitting bet between two priests, right? And I go, so guys, you guys believe in heaven, yeah? And both of them were like, uh, yeah. I'm like, okay, just double checking. So, of course they're like, well, why are you asking? So, I said, I don't know, every once in a while, I just want a reminder that there's something else after this life, you know, I just want a reminder that I'm going to see my dad again. I'm going to see my dog again. Like I just need a reminder and who better to remind me than two priests. So they're like, absolutely. Heaven is real. Now, obviously they're men of faith. They don't have Polaroids of heaven. They've never been there or well, actually, this is what I learned from them. So this is what they believe. Now, I'm just going to share it with you because it provided me with great comfort. Now, I don't know if it'll provide you with great comfort, but it did me. Basically, what they explained to me is you start with God. Your soul starts with God in the kingdom of heaven. And then you are born. And essentially, earth is purgatory. It's basically where you go to make good or bad decisions. It's where you go to sort your shit out. It's where you go to form relationships. You are judged by how you treat one another. You are judged, judged. That was the word they used, by the way. That's not, that's not me. That's not. Judged um, by how you speak about others, by how you... Um, Look out for your brothers and sisters. Uh, like, anyway, and then God calls you back home to the kingdom of heaven. And it is there that you 
are sorted out for your behavior on earth. I was like, wait, I'm sorry, what? we're going to have to go back. Take that back for a second. So I was with God. And, oh, but Aaron, this is the beauty of, let me, Aaron, let me really hear this, okay? So I'm like, so what you're saying is I was with God and Father Gary was like, yes, and he loved you so much that he decided you were worthy of this journey. And basically, earth is purgatory. It is the in-between. It is where you go from when your soul is concepted by the Lord and then when you are called home. People think purgatory is like a waiting room. It's earth. And then you come down here and you are exposed to original sin. You are exposed to whatever. And it is how you behave here, how you treat the other souls, that you are judged by God. And then you come back. Every single person. Now, by the way, they both were in full agreement on this part. Okay. I, listen, these are two priests. I'm just listening. I'm a student, right? I'm just a student trying to learn. So they both said that every single soul, when you die, is greeted by God. Okay. And the judgment is swift, right? Like it's right there. So he greets you and, and you are, you, you immediately have knowledge of his, I guess, opinion or I, I don't know what the right word is. I forget, um, on how you behaved. And then I said, so what is heaven? What is heaven? I want to know. And they said, heaven is community. Um, heaven is not a place. There's not like apartments and condos, right? It is a community. It is a sense of community and belonging. Y'all, that shit hit me like a ton of bricks, okay? It was like I got smacked in the head by the Lord, okay? So, um... They said that the only thing our souls want is community and belonging, that that is it, that that is how we are created, that that is what we want, community and belonging. And the absence of community and the absence of belonging is essentially hell. So if you look at souls on earth, people who are bullied, shunned, um, left out, um, you know, whatever, they start to go crazy because it is not how our souls were created. It is not, you know, we, we are, we, what we crave is community and belonging. Heaven is eternal belonging. It is the eternal feeling of being wanted and accepted by other souls. Literally, like the eternal feeling of being wanted. Think about that. Think about how many people on earth just want to be seen, just want to belong, just want to feel wanted, right? So I'm like this, y'all, I'm like this, listening to these two men talk on Thanksgiving. Like I was watching some sort of religious tennis match, okay? So... Basically, um, they said that is why God asks us to love our brothers and sisters as he loves us. Because if we love each other the way he loves us, we will be close to community and belonging all the time. We will essentially achieve heaven on earth. I was like, take me out, Jesus. Take me out. I'm, whoa. Whoa. So anyway, I said, look at all the mad faces. Like, what are y'all mad about, bitches? Go take a, like, drink some strong coffee and go take a dump. Um, by the way, Facebook tells me who puts the mad faces. So I could just block you. 
Anyway, here's the good part. So I'm talking to them about people who hurt us, right? I want to understand. What about the people that we do invite to belong? What about the people we do build community with who hurt us, who sleep with our husbands or talk about us behind our backs or steal our jobs? What about the people who we love or we give ourselves to or we, you know, whatever, and they hurt us and they do us dirty, right? What about those people? This dog, this dog is going to wear me out. Okay, get a puppy, they said. It'll be so fun, they said. Okay, so I was asking them, what about the people who hurt us? What about the people who we, oh, now you want to leave, bruh? I got all the way up in here and now you want to get off my door? Hold on. Knox, come on, bud. Knox, come on, fool. Look at this fool. You want a treat? Come on, bud. Okay, so hold on. I know y'all think right now you're listening to this and you're going, you're going, oh, she's talking about God, but this is the thing. There you go, buddy. Go get it. Here. Go get it. Um, the thing is, this is really like, I mean, it is about God, but hold on. Okay, it is about God, but this is my First of all, please re remember there is forgiveness and redemption in every sin. No one sin is greater than the next. There is forgiveness and redemption in every sin. They were crystal clear with me that all of my worst sins will be forgiven. So anybody out there right now carrying the burden of some sort of sin, some secret, deep, dark secret you're keeping and you wonder, uh, will, will I be forgiven? The answer is yes. You absolutely will be forgiven. If you truly want forgiveness, you will be forgiven. So, hey, okay. But anyway, I want to get to this point, okay? Because this was really important. I wanted to know why God brings people into your life and lets you love them and lets you do for them and then they shit on you. What is the purpose of that? Yeah, I need lessons and lessons. I need, you know, I get it, right? Lessons, fine, I get it. But I said, you know, these people come into your life and then they just leave. And that's some bullshit. Okay? And Father Bob said to me, what makes you think they left? I'm like, uh, because they're not here anymore, Bob. I'm, I'm, you know, I may have a lot of religious questions, but I have eyes. Okay? And Bob said, what makes you think God didn't remove them? I'm sorry, what? What makes you think God didn't remove them? Uh, come again? Well, you, you feel that they left on their own accord. What makes you think that God didn't remove them from your life? Um, so what you're saying is that maybe... They didn't just wake up one day and decide to leave me. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 no. There are people who will wake up one day and decide to leave you. But what makes you think that isn't divine intervention? What makes you think God didn't say, okay, the lesson here has been learned. The test here has been passed. This person needs to go because you've already shown me you can do the right thing and now they're only going to bring you down. So I am going to remove them from your life. Lord, if I didn't stand up and put my coffee down and ask for a glass of champagne. And I was like, oh my, 
I said, do you really think God works like that? And Bobby said, do you think he doesn't love you enough to intervene in your life when the test has been passed? When you've proven yourself worthy, you think he won't remove someone from your life? I was like, I don't know, Bobby. I'm trying to figure it out. And he was like, oh my, Jamie, he loves you so much. The second you prove yourself worthy, the second he believes you've learned the lesson that you need to learn, he will remove people from your life and it will hurt you because you won't see it, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't care if it hurts you. That's just a fact. He doesn't want you to be in pain, but it's part of it. And I was, that's what I said, Jennifer, but what if I wasn't ready for them to go? And he said, you know, sometimes you can't see what's coming down the road. You can't see what that person is about to get into, what that person is about to do, how negatively it would affect you or your children. And so God isn't concerned with the fact that you miss them. He's concerned with the fact that whatever is coming will cause you greater pain than you're in now. And he can't have that for you. Oh my goodness. Are you telling me God removed the generic Sally Field from my life because what was coming was going to be worse? Holy crapola. And you know what? I needed to hear all of it. I needed to hear all of it on Thanksgiving. I was listening to them and I was like, you know what? This is so true. This is so true. How can I say that God loves me enough to spare my life? I was suicidal before Michael. And he loved me so much he fought for me that I can't think he would remove bad people from my life? Come on now. Come on now. This is, that's crazy to me. You know, but I, you know, every once in a while I falter. It isn't that my faith falters. I just wonder if I'm worthy. I never lose faith in God. I have tremendous faith in God. But I wonder if I am worthy. Am I worthy? Am I enough? Does God care if I gain five pounds or lose five pounds? Does he care if I'm successful or not? Does he care if I'm lazy or if I yelled at my kids too much? I don't know. So am I worthy? I wonder that sometimes. I think we all have, pro you know, I think we all probably have times if we wonder um, if we're worthy. But I just want you to know that heaven is real. I know this. I knew it before, but like I really, really, really understand now, at least our belief in heaven, the way we see it, right? And we meaning the three Catholics, the two priests and Jamie, is that heaven is an eternal sense of belonging. And what a beautiful thing for your soul to go somewhere and always feel wanted. How glorious is that? To just always feel wanted? Will God remove a hurtful family member in a heartbeat? In a five tops heartbeat? Leon Dion Singham Sanders? Yes. Yes, he will. So I'm like, you know, I... For the most part, I feel wanted, but there are plenty of times um, there are plenty of times that I don't feel wanted or I feel like the outcast, and that's a terrible feeling. Every single person that's listening to Coffee Talk right now has walked into a room and felt like they are the ones that don't belong, that they are the ones that don't fit in. We don't look the part. We don't, we're not white enough. We're not black enough. We're not skinny enough. We're not fat enough. We're not tall enough or short enough or knowledgeable enough or religious enough or whatever enough. Now imagine going somewhere where you never feel that again, where the only thing you feel is a sense of belonging. Amen. Hallelujah. When I die, don't cry for me, Argentina. I want you to just know that I am somewhere feeling like I belong, you know?
Oh, great. Are you going to puke on my carpet? Can you try really hard not to do that? Thanks so much. Um, I do think that when I get to heaven, though, God's going to go, oh, she's here. Get the dog. Hurry up. Get the dog. Get the Doberman. Because if I don't see Ace the second I walk into heaven, I'm going to be pissed. Anyway, I, I just want you to know that right now, if you are dealing with somebody who is gone from your life, whether it's because you had to cut them out or because they walked away, I want you to know that God removed them because the pain that was coming for you down the road was going to be worse than anything you could have imagined. And I want you to trust, I want you to trust that when there are voids in your life and people come and people go, I want you to know that that is the divine inter intervention highway. And people will come and people will go and know that he is looking out for you. Okay? MB, your aunt, oh my goodness. Your aunt is, she's, she's in an eternal community of people, of souls that love her and want her and need her. And what a glorious thing. Is that amazing? Um, so I shared this with you. I told them both I was going to talk about this on Coffee Talk. I told um, Father Bob and Father Gary um, that I am going to talk about this on Coffee Talk and I'm going to let everybody know. And they laughed at me in like a good way, not like a bad way. Um, so if you look at Earth like purgatory... And you realize that this is indeed is the place where you are judged by your actions and treatments of others. Maybe we'll stop treating each other so poorly. Maybe we'll stop seeing people who look different from us and yelling things at them like go back to your own country or you're too fat or you don't belong because the truth is we're all here on borrowed time and God will call us home and we will be judged for our actions and treatment of others. And if you want that eternal sense of belonging, and I know you do and I believe you deserve it, you will work hard to love your brothers and sisters as God loves you. And you know what? Maybe I'm a preacher this morning. I'm not probably because my stomach is burning and I, you know, my dog puked, um, you know, sweet potato on the carpet, you know, and it's part of life. But I just want you to know that um, I absolutely know what is coming for us. And I just, I'm just so excited for us. I'm just so excited for us that I could burst. Anyway, I love you. I love you. That's why I really, today, I was a little nervous to do this coffee talk. I'm not going to lie. Rhonda, that makes me feel good because I was very nervous about doing this coffee talk. I was nervous about doing this coffee talk because I don't believe that you have to believe in God to be kind. By the way, if you're listening to this right now and you don't believe in God, you can still be kind to one another. You can still be a good person. You can still treat people with respect and and, 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 and long for a sense of community and belonging. And you don't have to believe in God for any of that, by the way. Um, but I was a little nervous to talk about it this morning, but I'm glad that I got it off my chest. Um, I'm excited and I just love you. And I just am so thankful for you. And this was a great coffee talk. This was good for me. Um, can you guys share this video there is a share button right there. Share it and let's see what other souls needed to hear this, Kimberly, besides just you and I and whoever else. Um, share the video. I love you so much today. Anybody who is suffering right now, just know there is such an amazing homecoming awaiting us and it's going to just be so glorious and amazing and we're going to be together forever and it's going to be awesome. Okay, I love you guys so much today. Have a great, great day.